Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Worship at Grace Lutheran Church. It's good to have you with us this morning. Uh, just a few announcements before we begin. Um, uh, Bible study is the same. Uh, men's Bible study every other Saturday, including this coming Saturday. And adult Bible study every Sunday morning at 9. Um, we, we've supported the Mexican Orphanage for many, many, many years. Um, so today... Um, 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 there's a little table set up outside. If you want to see them on the way out, you can make a uh, uh, make a donation, or you can just put it in the offering plate on your way out with a with a, with a note specifying um, Mexican orphanage. Um, and uh, and they did all the decorating for us to have a little uh, a little uh, special fall feel for us as we uh, as we gather here together. Uh, anything else that we needed to mention about the Mexican orphanage? Looking for, I think Susie's in the in the car. Oh, Hazel. No. It's Christy. Oh. They're pointing at each other. <laughs> no, Pastor. We thought we were going to have pumpkins to give away, but all we've got is masks. Masks. And the masks are for anybody to take. They're made by two of the local ladies. And if if you would like a mask, or if you need a mask, or if you just want something that matches your outfit, you know, help yourself. All right. So they've got some masks out there to to, to share, and then they. Uh, uh, a donation of your choosing is uh, is much much appreciated uh, to help continue to support the, the Mexican orphanage. Any other announcements today? We pray the service is a blessing to you. Uh, we continue our uh, Christ in Creation series. We're halfway halfway through. Uh, we finish it up next week today. Living in caring consumption. Please stand for our opening hymn. Uh, as printed on your orange insert there, come you thankful people, come.
today we consider the harvest of the Lord and our place in it. Most merciful God, we confess that we have been unfruitful and unfaithful, thinking, speaking, acting. We have sinned against you. We deserve your wrath and punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, revive us, direct us, that we may bear the fruits of your Spirit, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. As the rain waters the earth to make it sprout and grow, says the Lord, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. That word declares us forgiven for the sake of Jesus Christ, restored to the family of God and equipped by the Holy Spirit for service to the Lord. Amen. We pray. Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, you value all life and in love made a covenant with your creation. Teach us to live faithfully and responsibly as part of a community of creatures, your peaceable kingdom, so that we might exercise care in our consumption of all the gifts you so graciously give. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Of all flesh that is on the earth. 
God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second lesson is from Romans chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. Therefore, you have no excuse, whoever you are, when you judge others. For in passing judgment on another, you condemn yourself, because you, the judge, are doing the very same things. You say, we know that God's judgment on those who do such things is in accordance with the truth. Do you imagine, whoever you are, that when you judge those who do such things and yet do them for you, do them yourself, you will escape the judgment of God? Or do you despise the riches of his kindness and forbearance and patience? Do you not realize that God's kindness is meant to lead you to repentance? But by your hard and impenitent heart, you are storing up wrath for yourself on the day of wrath, when God's righteous judgment will be revealed. For he will repay according to each one's deeds, to those who by patiently doing good seek for glory and honor and immortality. He will give eternal life. Well, for those who are self-seeking and who obey not the truth but wickedness, there will be wrath and fury. There will be anguish and distress for everyone who does evil, the Jew first and also the Greek, but glory and honor and peace for everyone who does good, the Jew first and also the Greek, for God shows no partiality. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I hope you don't mind, but I'm a little nervous today. Yeah, I, what's what's wrong? What's well, going on? I snuck up through the bars of the pen, and, and, and I'm not used to this big world out here. And yeah, I, it's yeah. It's a little scary. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, I don't know who you are. You don't, you don't recognize me? No. Should I? Better. Now it feels a little bit more like home. Now I've got somebody that cares okay. about. Me. Okay. Okay. I mean, you're you're the most caring man I know. Well, I'm glad to know uh, you feel uh, feel cared for and uh, oh. uh, there at the farm. Uh, how you know? Do you have any insight from the rest of the animals? They feel cared for too. Well, yes. I mean, our whole family yeah. loves the new pen. Okay. On uh, that mud. It's yeah. So clean. Quality. We got we oh, got quality mud. It's quality yeah. mud out there. Yeah. And, and Clarice, the, the cow. Yeah. Oh, she's a happy girl. Yeah. Yeah. You okay. take good care of her. Okay. Every time she's in pain, you take out the milk. She's she's good. She's okay. on your side, okay? Good. Tell you. Good. Well, yeah. glad to glad to hear yeah. good reports yeah. from the from the animals. And Frank, Frank the horse, he he says his withers feel good with you. I, what are withers? Uh. I don't know. <laughs> Colleen, well, can you help us out? apparently, something? you brush them. Oh. Oh, okay. yeah. Okay. And that feels good for me. Oh, well, good. Well, we'll keep up, keep yeah. up the brushing. Keep okay, the take care of those withers. Yes. Okay. And, and the pasture, you yeah. take good care of that out there, and he gets to run, run forever. And he is very happy with you, the farmer. So all good reports. All good reports. Well, glad to hear everyone so take, well taken yeah. care of. So... I come here with a question. Yeah. Okay. You and your farmer's wife take care of so many people. My question is, who takes care of you? Ooh, well, that's uh, I like that question. Yeah, I know the I know the answer there. Do you know? <laughs> Pum falling pumpkins. It's taken care of. Take care. God takes God takes care of us. He takes care of oh. takes care of all all of us. God's yeah. a farmer. God's like a like a caring farmer who's always watching over us, uh, feeds us, uh, brushes out the withers. Yeah. Now that I'm going to use that all the time now. <laughs> uh, you know, gives us gives us his care, his compassion, his love, his hope, his mercy. Uh, oh. No, no one's no one's a better carer than our than our loving Father. Wow, wow! Isn't that great, everybody? Yeah. Amen. Oh, good. Amen. Good. Well, well, we sent. We're gonna send you, you send you home with a little care package. So you have a little oh. little snack for your way home. See uh, some, what uh, I mean? Some vegetables and Farmer stuff. Farmer always takes care of me. Oh, and look at that! I have a hippie 
apples. Oh, they're the, they're best. the best apples. Yeah. I love those. All right. I love those farmers. So I'll tell you. Well, shall we give thanks in prayer? Let's do this. All right. Dear Father, Dear Father, thank you for sending. Thank you for sending. Your love and compassion. Your love and compassion. Through our loving Savior. Through our loving Savior. Who cares for us now and forever. Who cares for us now and forever. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. Well, thank you, Barbara. Back to the back to the farm. Please join me for a responsive litany, giving gods to God. Both day and night, from the rising of the sun to the time when it sets, our God is in control. All our Within the lives of our leaders and teachers, our employers and supervisors, our friends and family members, God is in control. They are in our homes and possessions, our money and treasures, our buildings and streets, our cities and towns are under God's control. The hands extended in welcome, the coins dropped in offering baskets, the acts of kindness and love in our churches and communities are directed by our God. They For we are convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation. Please stand for the singing of the Alleluia verse and the reading of the Holy Gospel. again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net to the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now there were, they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and jumped into the lake. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of large fish, a hundred and fifty-three of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, 
Come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared, ask, dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. This is the gospel of the Lord. Sometimes we need people to help us see, truly see what is happening around us. Artists can do that. They can pick up their paper and pencil and capture a moment, sketch it so that we can see it, and seeing it, appreciate it. Consider the drawing by Carl Fay for our sermon this morning on your bulletin card. Take a moment to look at the creature that rests in the palm of a hand. It's a mayfly. They are creatures of the moment, 
Born in the water, they swim to a rock or a plant. There they grow wings and fly to another location, only to molt again into adults. Once they are adults, they live only a day or two. Their mouths are actually non-functional. They do not need to eat, for they live only briefly. They live, they fly, they mate, they die. In a day or two at the most, and yet there it is, a mayfly in the palm of a hand. It wasn't there yesterday, it won't be there tomorrow. But for now, someone holds this creature and is drawn into the momentary wonder of God's creation. The prism of glass up, up near the top of the photo art, artwork gives off a spectrum of light and a rainbow surrounds the mayfly. I'd like for you to think about that image. A rainbow surrounds a creature in the palm of your hand. Often when we see rainbows, the last thing we think about is the momentary mayfly. Our culture has taken the rainbow and used it as a symbol for gay rights. Before that, the rainbow was popularly associated with leprechauns. Remember Lucky Charms? General Mills was playing with the myth of a pot of gold at the end of a rainbow. Rights, gold, so much can lie underneath a rainbow. But what happens if we reach back into Scripture and listen to the Word of God? What we will discover is that God has given us the rainbow in order that we might see something else. Not gay rights, not gold, but life, created life, protected by God. Even though we rarely see it, and even though it may last only a day, the mayfly, the mayfly still has value in the sight of God. Jesus said, Not a sparrow falls to the ground apart from your Father. God has placed that which He treasures, His creatures, into our hands, and He has given us a rainbow in order that we might see this great gift in order that we might remember his covenant with all living beings. In the image, the rainbow surrounds the momentary mayfly in the palm of a hand. This reminds us that we care for God's creatures. In our text from Genesis this morning, something similar happens. God reminds us of his covenant with all living creatures so that we treasure the life God places into our hands. This morning we will consider our text from Genesis in order that we might care for God's creatures. Faithfully, responsibly, my prayer is that we might live in caring consumption as part of God's community of creatures here on earth. Our text this morning opens with Noah standing on ground that is still damp with the wrath of God. God has looked from heaven, seen wickedness deep within the heart of humans, seen how we have fought and killed one another, and sent the flood of his judgment upon all creation. He flooded the earth and saved Noah, his family, and the animals that Noah gathered on the earth. Now God takes Noah back to the memory of Eden. Back to the moment when God first placed Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden and called them to care for creation. Be fruitful and multiply, God said. Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. That's what God said. Now, as Noah stands there at the dawn of a new creation, God recalls that memory. He sends Noah to care for the world. This time, however, God's word are a bit different. This time, in addition to giving green plants for food, God gives animal for food. He says, the fear of you and the dread of you 
shall be upon every beast of the earth and upon every bird of the heavens, upon everything that creeps on the ground and all the fish of the sea. Into your hands they are delivered. Every moving thing that lives shall be food for you. There is now a strain in our relationship with the animals of this world. They are afraid of us, and well they should be, because, because God has given them to us for food. As we care for God's creatures, we find that they have a God-given fear. I remember seeing a young girl in her backyard with a baby rabbit in her hand, and she was petting it. As I watched her hand, I could see the poor rabbit's heart beating through the fur. The rapid beat of a small heart filled with great fear. It was a moment of tender tension. A little girl, a baby rabbit, her small hand trying to calm a frightened heart. God gives us fearful creatures and calls us to their care. God has given us the animal kingdom for food, but he also wants us to be aware of something. He wants us to be aware of the wonder of this gift. It would be easy to see the animal kingdom as something we can use indiscriminately for our selfish passions. We could cultivate a taste for shark fin soup and overlook the fact that our culinary desires are causing ecological harm. Sharks are finned and then dropped back into the ocean. Without fins, unable to swim, they sink to the bottom and die. From 2000 to 2013, we were killing about 100 million sharks a year. Since sharks mature slowly and have a low reproductive rate, our desire for this delicacy was driving an animal to, dis to extinction. The loss of this major predator means more than the loss of shark fin soup on the menu. It will reshape marine communities. Now, I assume that most of you have never had shark fin soup. I haven't. Um, but you've eaten chicken, <coughs> beef, pork. When was the last time you considered how those animals were treated? Our text reminds us this morning that all of the animals we eat are brought to life by God and cared for by Him. That's the other teaching of this text. God places fear in the hearts of the animals, but He also seeks to place love in the hearts of humans. Notice what God does in this text. After God gives animals to humans for food, he reminds Noah of the divine gift of life. God tells Noah that he shall not eat flesh with its life, that is, the blood. God wants us to know that life is sacred. The lives of humans, the lives of animals, all life belongs to God. Those who take a human life could have their life taken. And although humans can take the lives of animals, they do so recognizing that life is a gift from God. <clears throat> Not only does God remind Noah of the divine gift of life, but then God also makes a covenant with all created life. This is the part of the story we often remember. God placed a rainbow in the sky, a sign of his covenant. God will never again destroy all of life by the waters of a flood. What is interesting, however, is that God makes this covenant not just with human creatures. God makes this covenant with all living creatures. God says, Behold, I establish my covenant with you and your offspring after you, and with every living creature that is with you. God's covenant is not just with humans, but also with the creatures of this world. God cares for them. When God sees the rainbow in the clouds, he remembers his everlasting covenant 
between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God has offered us a gift, the gift of animals for food, and yet he calls us to treasure that gift with him. In this way, God weaves together care and consumption. On the one hand, he delivers all animals into our hands, and yet on the other hand, he establishes a covenant with all animals on the earth. The life God pictures for Noah, for Abraham, for Isaac and Jacob, for Peter and Paul, for me and you, is a life of caring consumption. We care for the animals that God has given us even as we consume some animals as God's provision of food. Care and consumption are woven together in a life of faithful responsibility. Unfortunately, we have a tendency to tear apart what God has joined together. God has brought us into a life of caring consumption, but we can destroy that life. We can make it only about care or only about consumption, but not about both. Some of you may have been easy, I was, as I, uneasy as I was talking about shark fin soup. It could have sounded like I was bringing a political agenda to the pulpit, like I was becoming a raving environmentalist. Isn't it sad that we cannot talk about the care of con the care of creation without generating that fear. I think that is because there are so few Christian voices talking about the care of creation. When we hear a Christian talk about it, other voices ring in our ears and drown out what is said. For example, as I talked about shark fin soup, boy, it's hard to say, shark fin soup. <laughs> Shark and soup. Shark soup. You may have overheard those who emphasize care to the point where they deny consumption. Melanie Joy, a social psychologist, animal activist, and educator, writes about what she calls carnism, the belief systems of which Christianity is one that causes us to think it's okay to eat meat. The goal of her book is to move people from carnism to compassion and care for all species. Yet in this case, she overemphasizes care to the point where God's gift of consumption is seriously called into question. When care is overemphasized to the point where the word of God is denied, when that is all you hear, unfortunately, some Christians tend to shift all the way over to the other side of the spectrum. They end up overemphasizing consumption to the point where they forget about care. We hear about chickens at industrialized farms genetically manipulated to grow larger and faster so they can be slaughtered as early as six or seven weeks. Their flesh grows faster than their skeletons or internal organs, which breaks down under the stress. Their beaks are removed to prevent the fighting that results from their living conditions. We hear these reports, but we don't listen. Because the battle lines are drawn, it's either care or consumption, and after all, a person has got to eat. Rather than work together, to see how we might faithfully and responsibly live in caring consumption. We join the fray. We argue for care, we argue for consumption, or we simply ignore it and separate our faith from daily life in God's creation. Yet God has placed us in the midst of creation, and he has called us to live here faithfully and responsibly sharing life with all other creatures in the world God has made. God values all life, so much so that he not only sends a rainbow to remind us of his care, but he sends his son so that we may live in his care. When we lose sight of God's good design, God does not lose sight of us. 
he sees us in our sin, separated from the world, as we consume but don't care, separated from one another, as we fight about care and consumption, separated from God, as we act as if faith does not have any relationship with how we live in the world. God sees us torn and separated, lost in our self-destruction, and he sends Jesus to bring about peace, wholeness, a restored relationship between God and humans, and a restored relationship between human creatures and all creation. Jesus Christ took on our human flesh, borrowing our blood, he became the perfect sacrifice for our sin. He took his life and offered it up to God that we might be forgiven, that our lives might be cared for by God, and that our torn relationships with him, with one another, and with the world might be made whole again. What a blessing today for us to gather around God's Word, for us to hear God calling us away from dividing the world into care or consumption, and call us back to a life of caring consumption in Him. Caring consumption is how we rejoice in the gift of life from God. When God brought Israel out of Egypt as they wandered through the desert wilderness, God offered them laws to guide their life in the promised land. That land would be flowing with milk and honey. That land would offer an abundance of life. Yet even in the midst of abundance, God desired his people to live in caring consumption. He told them that when they gleaned the fields, they were not to glean right up to the edge but leave something for the poor and the traveler. When an ox was treading out grain, they were not to muzzle it. It, should, it too should benefit from the labor of generating food. Life wasn't just about consumption. It also involved care for the community. Both humans and animals, God also gave them directions for how they consumed animals. He told them that they were not to boil a goat in its mother's milk, Exodus 34, and that if they came across a bird's nest with a mother and her young in it, they could not take the young away from the mother, Deuteronomy 22. The animal kingdom was not just about resources. It also involved care for relationships. Life is not just consumption, but community. The world is not just resources, but relationships. God desired Israel to live in caring consumption, valuing community, valuing relationships with all creatures as they entered the promised land. For you too, today, life is about more than your clothes or the food that you eat. It's about community, not just commodities. Relationships, not just resources. The goodness of creation, not just goods. Think about Jesus appearing to his disciples after Easter. What is interesting is that Jesus comes in his human body. Notice how Jesus does not use our human body as a resource, as a commodity. He did not take on human flesh, use it to bring about forgiveness, and then toss it away. Rather, he entered into community with us. He died for us, and when he rose from the dead, he rose with his body, that he might live in relationship with us in a new creation. There we shall live in human flesh, in glorified bodies, forever creatures of God, until that day we live now in a relationship of caring consumption with all of creation. When Jesus appeared to his disciples on the shores of the Sea of Galilee, 
he found them fishing. As they come to the shore, he gathers them around a fire for breakfast. After his resurrection, Jesus doesn't only come to his disciples at the meal of the Lord's Supper. He also comes to them in a common meal, fish cooked over coals for breakfast. What scholars have always found interesting about this text is the fact that the disciples caught 153 fish. John gives us the precise number, 153. Scholars have debate, debated over the meaning of that number. Some say it represents the number of known species of fish in the world, others that it represents the number of known nations in the world. What I find interesting, however, is not the meaning of the number, but the meaning of the fact that they counted the fish at all. Perhaps they counted the fish not because the number itself was important, but because the fish were. Each fish, a gift from God, to be counted, valued, appreciated as a gift. Like the time when they gathered leftover baskets of bread after Jesus fed thousands. Like the time when Jesus pointed out the lilies of the field and the birds of the air. Suddenly they see they are creatures in an abundant creation. And all of life is a gift, a surprising gift from God. Life in the world involves caring consumption. Whether it is a breakfast of fresh fish over coals or a casserole of chicken from the oven. When, when you eat, you eat with Jesus. And what you eat, you take note of. You count as a gift. In a way, this text from Genesis is a prism that shines God's light into our world. Yes, God has given us food for our table, but it is always part of a larger picture, a life of caring consumption. We see the food that we eat and the world that produced it. We see the waste that we make and the world that receives it. We are part of God's world, giving, receiving, caring, consuming. A community of creatures who live in relationship with one another, surrounded by a promise, a rainbow, if you will, the eternal covenant of a loving God. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep our hearts and minds on the Creator, the creator who has created everything around us. May we live in a relationship of caring consumption with the gifts that he has surrounded us with. May we have an attitude of gratitude for all these wonderful gifts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We'll take prayer requests in a moment. Uh, if you'll remember that we are online, so remember to keep your uh, prayer requests. Um, make sure you have the permission of the one you're putting the request in for uh, and honor their, um, their privacy. Um, Al Shawis did have a, a stroke uh, just, just the other day, and then this, mor this morning he's, he's particularly struggling. Um, his speech was impacted. Um, he was hospitalized uh, right after uh, the, the stroke, although we don't know if the stroke happened the night before, the morning of. He was, um, uh, but uh, he's been hospitalized since, since then. Um, they were looking to move him into a care home, but then with his struggles this morning, he's uh, still, at the, still at the hospital. Uh, so we pray for, for Al and his family. Uh, we also pray for Angus Pratt, Andy Higby, Art MacArthur, men and women in public safety, Cora Dickey, Jean's daughter, La Diane, Marlis's daughter, Jackie, homeless people around the world, Ruth's friend, uh, Jenny and her mom, all those infected with the coronavirus and for the stop of its spread, Elaine Gilbert, Marilyn's daughter, um, and those celebrating birthdays this week, Roy DeLong, 
Kyle Thompson, Stana Rutford, and Lisa Bird. Um, did you get reports from your still wait, still waiting? waiting. Yeah, patiently waiting. Some. Yeah. All right. Thank you. All right. Any other requests today? Lenore? Uh, for Greg, who is undergoing uh, chemotherapy. Okay. So for, for Greg, as he undergoes chemotherapy for yeah. for peace and protection. Jackie? Uh, first, for my twin sister, Jerry, who has shingles. Oh. Okay, for your twin sister, Jerry, battling shingles. Okay. Isaiah? Eddie. For Eddie and all the men and women in the armed services. Anyone else? Kelly? For our country. For our country? Okay. All right, all right. please stand for Britain. Dear Heavenly Father, you have showered us with gift after gift after gift, even in the midst of, of chaos and struggle and loss and difficulty. You still surround us with, with doctors, with family members, with, uh, with, with recovery, with, with peace and hope when the recovery seems, uh, seems delayed or not to come at all. We lift up before you and, and put in your ever-capable and ever-caring hands uh, each of those that we've named this morning and, and so many others that struggle physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Uh, may, may they each find um, an extra measure of your, of your peace and comfort in the midst of struggle. And, we, and may we be filled with your love and compassion and care as we reach out um, to, to support them in their, in their time of need. Um, Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lord, we ask um, for a special prayer for our, for our country as, uh, as, you, as, as we seek to be led and, and guided by, by your wisdom, by your hope and your truth. Uh, may you provide um, uh, bridges, bridges uh, uh, to to uh, to gap the the differences and the divide. Uh, may you fill us with with love to drive out hatred, and uh, may may you just take care of each and every uh, uh, struggle and situation that exists within our country and throughout the world. May you uh, watch over Eddie and all the men and women of the armed services and all those. Uh, in serving in public safety, putting them themselves in, in harm's way. Lord, in your mercy. In Lord, we thank you for the gift of life itself, for those who celebrate birthdays this week, um, and for the gift of your very body and your very blood that you offer us again this day. Uh, you, you show us that we are forgiven as you give us the price paid for, that won our forgiveness, your very body and your very blood. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us how to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with his favor and grant you his peace. Thank you.
Our closing hymn, Esper. Say goodbye to our online folks as we continue with the service of the second.